Hey, what's up everybody, Trofinet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about interesting Gwent decks to play around with or discuss new features in the game. And that is exactly what we'll be doing today. Master Mirror is finally live and aside from rendering my predictions on the subjects of the evolving card completely incorrect, it brings a breath of fresh air to a game which had been standing still for quite some time now. Weather is back, some of the leader cards are back, we got the fancy new abilities on the new evolving cards and even some long overdue nerfs on certain overpowered archetypes. There's a lot to talk about but we'll try and discuss every new feature and change in the new expansion and update 7.0 in this video. Let's dive in. First things first, I want to talk about some of the gameplay changes first. A few key adjustments were made that had a large impact on the feel of the game in its entirety. The first big one, in my mind, is the introduction of Devotion. Devotion is a new keyword present on a lot of the new cards, especially the evolving cards since it's a requirement for reaching the final evolution on all of them. To trigger the abilities tied to Devotion, your starting deck cannot have any neutral cards. This means that you can add dual faction cards, such as Tatterwing, and more importantly, you can also steal neutral cards with Invocation or copy them in your Assimilate deck. Only your starting deck needs to adhere to the No Neutrals rule. To offset the drawback, Devotion cards are slightly more powerful compared to their provision cost than normal cards. What's even cooler is that Devotion also adds an extra strategic layer since it also provides you with information on your opponent's deck if you see them playing these cards. If Devotion is triggered by your opponent, you can be certain that they don't have certain big counter cards like Geralt Igni, Erden or Karate Heatwave or, you know, any sort of artifact removal anyway, allowing you in turn to play out your combos a bit more freely than you would otherwise want to do. Because of this, Devotion has a lot bigger impact than I originally thought, making it one of the best additions to the game in this expansion, to my mind. Next up is the buff and general improvement of weather or row effects. All of them now have their own keyword. Frost, Fog and Rain, for example, are very familiar. Dragon's Dream keeps its same name. Skellige Storm spawns the Storm effect and Ragnarok spawns the Cataclysm effect for 4 turns now instead of infinitely and changes its effects to dealing 3 times 1 damage randomly each turn. Finally the Blood Moon is now also a negative row effect, applying 2 bleeding on a random enemy each turn or damaging it by 2 if it was already bleeding, making it a lot more useful and better suited to the bleeding archetype. The biggest change however is the fact that all weather removal cards have had their effects changed so there is no longer a way to remove row effects from the board. This makes all row effects more consistent in their damage output while still giving you options to negate it by applying shields, armor or moving units out of the effect. Personally I find this to be a genius way to make the use of weather effects viable again, which is apparent in the amount of frost decks I've faced so far. Veil vale is probably my personal favorite addition to Gwent in this expansion. It's a status effect that basically gives the unit it applies to status immunity. This makes it unable to gain any sort of status, positive or negative, as long as Veil vale is active. Status immunity is actually a concept we discussed in one of our previous videos on Nilfgaard. It allows you to protect your units from insta-kills through poison or disabling effects through locking lessening the power of both party pooper effects in such a way that it clearly influences the ways people are playing already. I've seen far less purely poison or lock decks in my first few hours of playing the game, which is very very nice. It furthers that feeling of Gwent becoming a fun game again, building up your own board instead of trying to completely wreck your opponents. Scaliga aside. Something devotion also helps achieving. Which brings us to another very overpowered archetype which got a bit of a makeover, Harmony. Harmony got nerfed in a rather interesting way. Harmony now only triggers when a unit with a unique category is played on the same row instead of the entire board. This limits the amount of points you get to only units on the same row and also turns Harmony into a balancing act between maximizing points and spreading those points onto both rows instead of automatically getting both for free. 
It's definitely going to be enough to strip Harmony of its infamy, but Symbiosis looks to be well on its way to take its place for Squiatel. More on that in a minute. I also want to briefly talk about the evolving card or evolution cards. All of them are extremely powerful but require devotion to reach their full potential. And you need to reach round 3 to use them properly as well. All final forms have Veil, so are protected from status effects, have a passive effect that provides boosts or damage when certain cards are played, and also have an extra ability when being played, usually playing or spawning extra units. A well-rounded package of abilities that can always swing a match in your favor if played at the right time. The characters themselves are a bit of a weird selection. Some are original leader cards such as Etne, the Usurper and Harold on Crate, bringing back the original artwork or completely revitalizing the character with completely new paintings. Jacques de Aldersberg seems a weird fit for Syndicate since he doesn't really fit into the Novigrad origins of the other cards, but since the Firesworn, Eternal Fire and Order of the Flaming Rose are all lumped together in this game, it kind of makes sense. I still think Deekstar would have been a way better option as the Syndicate evolving card, but seeing Jacques and Alvin in Gwent is also very nice. Lastly, we have two book characters. Oberon, the original king of the NL and the Wild Hunt for monsters, and the one I totally called after Jason Slama's tweet, Prince slash King Varaxis of Karak for Northern Realms. I have a separate video in the works that will expand on the lore of these characters for anyone who doesn't know who they are yet, so I won't go into too much detail here. I'm just pretty stoked that Karak joins the Northern Realms faction in Gwent, since there's a lot more characters that could be introduced from the Season of Storms book in this way. Aside from the evolving cards, we of course get a bunch of new and returning archetypes as well. Some are more fleshed out than others, however. Northern Realms got the most subtle boost, just working on reinforcing engine cards with Ildiko, King Balahun, and a few higher power boosters, as well as giving you a very fancy Echo card in Amphibious Assault, providing you ways to pull cards from the deck and playing them immediately. Nothing too spectacular there, but it just reinforces that engine archetype really, really well. Skellige got some more support for the Warrior category, with a few more damage dealers and Berserker cards. Nothing too wild here either, but just some extra support for self-damage and individual damage pings is really nice, although it seems to be a bit too overtuned at the moment. Personally, I would have liked to see Hemdal's original ability back since we get all the extra warriors joining the fray, but that might come later on. Syndicate mostly got more support for the Fire Swarm Swarms in that they can now be transformed into 3 power, 1 armor Flaming Rose Footmen by multiple new cards, and these Footmen also count as Fire Swarm tokens for all the other effects. This not only boosts the base power of the Swarm, but also provides some protection. Firesworn Swarm still had the problem that they filled the board too quickly, but the Lonely Champion actually fixes that problem by allowing you to clear an entire row of Firesworn tokens, clearing it for more units that you can spawn afterwards. Monsters finally got full support for the Wild Hunt and Frost Effect, which is a return I've really enjoyed so far. There are multiple quick ways to apply Frost on your enemy's rows, and some interesting ways to interact with the effect make for a very cool new archetype which is just really really refreshing. Being certain that the row effect can't be removed also eases up the tension and allows you to balance applying the effect and benefiting from it with all the new wild hunt cards. Nilfgaard got its spying archetype back in full with multiple new cards that can benefit from having spying being applied and new ways to apply the status and playing disloyal units. It's something I've been asking for for a while now to make Nilfgaard a bit more interesting again and I'm pleased with the new additions. The distinction between a disloyal unit and the spying status is also now much clearer since they have been separated completely. Disloyal units are played on the opposing side of the board and apply the spying status after they are played. Spying is also available as a separate status effect that can just be applied separately from disloyal units as well. This makes their interaction with cards like Thirsty Dame much more clear, which definitely benefits newer players. Last but definitely not least, we have Symbiosis for Squirtel, which is probably replacing Harmony as the strongest archetype in the faction. 
Every time you play a nature card, a tree ant will spawn with a power equal to the amount of units with symbiosis on your side of the field. It has the same snowball effect as harmony as more symbiosis units will spawn stronger tree ants, but in a different way. It also gives you a well-deserved boost to the Mahakam Forge leader ability since tempering counts as an extra nature card to trigger symbiosis on. Another obvious benefit of this is of course Mystic Echo, which can be used to play a gold nature card from your graveyard again if you want to. Aside from Symbiosis, Squiretel also got some extra support for hand boosting, which is also a nice return to old school Gwent. Get your Aglaiz ready in your hands to benefit from that the most. Aside from all of those new changes, I also wanted to highlight some UI adjustments and quality of life improvements. The play menu has been updated to put classic mode front and center, which has also been renamed to standard mode for clarity. Some extra information has also been added, such as a description of each mode without the need to hover over or hold the relevant mode buttons, as well as your current rank and rank progress when standard mode is selected in ranked. You even get a more detailed overview of your MMR when you reach pro rank. It's a really handy change that provides you with all the information you need in one quick glance in the game itself and makes it clear that standard mode is where you want to start for newer players. And another final very small visual change that I want to note here is the new icon for opening kegs after you've bought them. Previously this was just a green button with an arrow which didn't really make it clear that you would start opening kegs automatically by pressing that button. The new icon clearly shows a keg being opened, so opening them accidentally this way shouldn't happen too much anymore. It's the little things that also show just how much care the developers put into each and every update. And that's it for today! What do you think about the new expansion? Is it the breath of fresh air that Gwen needed or did it leave you out in the cold? Let me know in the comment section down below if you want to talk. If you're aching for more, you can check out my Art Secret in Gwent videos or any of my broader analysis videos. We did that um, a few days ago with the new reward system as well. There are Master Mirror deck guides uh, that are also going to be added to the channel soon, starting with probably a Wild Hunt Frost deck. I'm also I'm working on a lot of different decks, so I'll, uh, I'll see what the first one is going to be. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. As always, check me out on Twitter at atrofinut, that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is really appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye!